Good morning, and uh, welcome to Drawing for Tattooers. I'm your host, James Wisdom. Um, I'm getting the live stream going, so um, be sure to let me know uh, if this is working for you. You can let me know in the comments. Um, right, so, yeah, I just got a notification that we're live, so thank you again for joining me. Uh, again, this is Drawing for Tattooers. Um, it's July 24th. Um, 2023. And uh, I'm your host, James Wisdom. Um, I tattoo in Indianapolis at Artistic Skin Designs. Um, you can find me at uh, tattooingwisdom.com or uh, all my socials at Tattooing Wisdom. Um, again, I uh, just want to thank you for coming to uh, this show. And uh, this is, of course, uh, Guy Atchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community. Uh, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are all encouraged to join in these live stream and real world events. Our aim is to inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. Um, we beam out nearly every single day and with your help we've become a quality network of live and on-demand uh, art and tattoo related content. And, uh, and so this is the this is the time where I like to share my screen with you. So, right, ah, so, excellent. Um, right, so this is the Reinventing the Tattoo homepage uh, where you can find uh, all of the courses as well as the other content that uh, Reinventing the Tattoo offers. It's all educational. It's all uh, sort of centered around uh, growing a you know successful tattoo practice uh, so if if you're interested or of course uh, you know someone you know make sure to tag them and uh, send them this information right so you can always find us here at reinventingthetattoo.com um, and then also there's an app reinventing the tattoo app uh, it's available at the apple app store the google play store uh, or wherever you download your apps at uh, we also have a, a YouTube channel as well as a Facebook page where you can see this content. Um, there's a Roku channel as well. Uh, let's see, anywhere from 12 to 15 channels going at any given time. So, uh, so lots and lots for you to uh, probably more than you could ever watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're always making new stuff. So, um, of course, we're a podcast as well, Reinventing the Tattoo Podcast. Um, and you can find us on uh, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Right. Um, so, as far as uh, you know, what's available on reinventing? Um, we have uh, you know professional development courses from twenty of the world's uh, leading tattooers, and uh, you know, so you just just interface with it here, right? Yeah, and you can um, get access to. So all of the various offerings um, from Reinventing the Tattoo. So yeah, so check it out. And um, I think uh, I think you're really going to be pleasantly surprised by uh, what's all available. And so um, we, uh, we like to plug all of our other programming that's, um, that's upcoming. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the home page here, you can see the events schedule. And um, you can always like zoom in. We encourage you to, to zoom in if you're interested in, into these shows live. Um, but here's the rundown. On Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have Skill Building Sundays hosted by Jason Leeser. On Mondays at 9 a.m. Eastern, we have Drawing for Tattooers hosted by James Wisdom. That's me. That's this show. So thanks for coming. Um, at 11 a.m. on Mondays, we have the Tattoo Weekly. At 5 p.m. on Mondays, we have Let's Talk About Feelings. And at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the Subscribers Exclusive Drawing Group. Um, to get access to the drawing group, the Subscribers Exclusive Drawing Group, you can, of course, enroll in the Canon, or uh, you, know, you can also, you can also um, sign up and subscribe, and then you can become a part of it. Uh, so it is, um, it's a lot of fun. I do it. And uh, there's quite a few people that join us here on the show that do it as well. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested, 
uh, you can find out more here on the website. <clears throat> All right, continuing. Uh, at 1 p.m. on Wednesdays, we have the Tattoo Now show. And then at 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays, we have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast. So um, just a week full of great programming. We're always uh, making new content. So we, we appreciate you tuning in. Um, right. So we'd like to uh, we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsors. They're featured down here at the bottom, right? So, uh, World Tattoo Events. WorldTattooEvents.com is the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. There are lots of updates as conventions are rescheduling like crazy. So, um, you can always find out more about the latest conventions in your area here at WorldTattooEvents.com. Tattoo Now. Tattoo Now is technology for tattooers the leading edge in professional development and management, as well as digital tools for tattooers of all levels. There are upgrades competitive with any CRM mailing list software out there. So of course, if you want to take your communication to the next level, uh, check out Tattoo Now. Ask for Gabe. Um, he'll get you all squared away. Uh, and of course, uh, we'd like to thank Guy Adjison for being the founder and inspiration behind reinventing and the reinventing the tattoo community. You can learn more about Guy Atchison by visiting guyatchison.com, uh, where you can uh, you can purchase paintings, prints, as well as tattoo machines, and learn about Guy's story, his journey of becoming a painter, and then entering the world of tattooing. Um, really fascinating. So um, again, thank you, Guy. And uh, tattooingwisdom.com. This is my website, and you, I'm always updating it. Um, trying to do a blog. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it, gang. So anyway, but you can always come check out my stuff and, and see what I've got going on as well. So um, yeah, with that, uh, let's get it going. Uh, hey, Amber, how you doing? Sorry, I was muted. Good morning. Oh, still can't still you're still on mute for some reason. Can't hear you. Let's see. Well, you're working on your tech. Okay, can you hear ah, me creatures now? Creatures in the chat. No, I can't hear you yet. Let me restart my phone, and I'll no, be right I got back. You. I, just, I just got you back. Yep. Okay, you can hear me now? On, there was something on me. Yeah, it was something on my end. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I'm like not trying to guess. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, so, good morning, Amber. Thank you for coming. It's really great to see good you. Good morning um yeah how's it going it's going good that's you uh, know things have happened i've readjusted i'm going on oh um new things if you'd like to if you'd like to share you can't be a um, w so yes, my mentor and i have parted ways oh that's always a tough one. Oh no it is but Everything happens for a reason. Um, okay. And well. he just couldn't put in the time or money. I really needed him to in order to take me farther than I already am. Well, you know, I mean, so you know, this is a, uh, this is a space where, you know, we have, where we have community and we like and we, we talk about things and I think this is uh um that's important, right? And of course, yeah. like uh sometimes you just know what's right for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you just know and it's like it's hard to even hard to even put it into words, I believe. You know, like it, it probably if it, it's probably it's sort of a knowing that we have that we don't know how we know. <laughs> And if you could, yeah, sort, of, if you could sort of say it all, it wouldn't be right. You know? But I was like, I have an apprenticeship. I ain't questioning anything. Well, um, so I think uh, it seemed like you did get a lot from it. And Oh, um, yeah, I did. I absolutely did. That's good. That's, that's really good. 
Um, and what I did learn will take me further. I just don't think he realized how much taking on an apprentice actually is. Well, um, so I think, uh, I'm well, glad you're here. Glad that you can, um, you know, keep coming back to, you know, you're, you're interested in your learning, you're interested in your education. And I think, um, uh, this is, this is a place where I learn too, right? <laughs> we all learn from each other. And, and, um, uh, so it's a great resource. And so use your resources, use your network and, um, you know, just keep on, just keep swimming as they say. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm sorry to hear that. But, uh, like you said, like with, you know, with a bit of time, you'll be able to, in retrospect, sort of see where it took you. So yeah, it's, um, it is always tough saying things happen for a reason. I think it, you know, it doesn't always, it doesn't always make sense in the moment. It but doesn't, it does, but yeah. I've found over the years that with a little time and you look back, you can see what the lesson absolutely is and then understand why that thing happened. So I've been able to just trust in the fact that it happened for a reason. And I will understand why later. Right. So or, not. Right. <laughs> or not yeah. too. Oh, you know what I mean? But that's okay. You know, sometimes unknowing, we don't know stuff and that's, but sometimes we can't, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, just can't, we just can't ever, can't know it all, of course, or, but anyway, anyway, I'm glad you're here. I'm, and uh, so hang in there. Right. And um, um, yeah, just think, uh, think about what it is that you need. I, you know what I mean? Like work on, work on trying to find the things that are going to really help you flourish. In oh, your, absolutely. You know, in and your... in the meantime, I'm going to keep owning my craft. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Well, again, glad you're here. Good morning. Spirit, good morning to you, sir. Hey, Spirit. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How's everyone? I'm doing well. Ah, just saying hey to, hey to creature in the chat. Uh, good morning, creature. Mm, morning. Yeah. So, um, anyway, what's, uh, what's new spirit? Anything, um, anything new with you? We, we had a, you and I had a great conversation just the other day. It was, it was awesome getting a chance to catch up with you. Um, there you are. Yeah, no, nah, it was cool. Yeah. Morning routines. Wink, wink. Uh, so, uh, nah, it was great. Uh, yeah, nah, um, I don't really have anything going on. I'm, uh, I decided I'm going to start doing portraits of um, friends of mine. Um, this class, this class course I'm taking, is, it's just got me like wanting to try the formula that it's set forth. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, I, might, I can try my hand at some portraits. And here I'm, uh, I'm actually, um, well, let me show you. This is just the, this is my, um, this is my friend, Quamel Preston, he's a tattoo artist, um, and uh, he um, we apprenticed. Well, he apprenticed under the shop that I that I uh, worked at. He, pre he pretty much apprenticed under me, um, and uh, so so this is what it is. This is what I'm doing. This is what my brain is doing. So uh, he's one of my old students, and I really saw him develop his black and gray very rapidly, as well as his realism. Um, and so I am drawing him so that I can pull from that knowledge of his uh, in some way, shape, form. So, um, and then I'm gonna draw some of my other friends that also do black and gray so that I can just continue to pull from, from the knowledge of, you know, that, the, that the universe has provided them and will also provide me. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And it also, it also it's cool because I, I really have affection for these guys, you know, um, you know, your old students when they go out in the universe and they do great work, you know, this is just kind of my time to, to spend time with them and just you know, talk to them and pray over them a little bit, you know, just a little spiritual stuff there for you guys. But, you know, that's what I'm doing. That's outstanding. Nice. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I'm so, uh, I don't know. It, it's inspiring. And of course, like that you're doing this, so, you know, you're doing all of this, uh, this work on your craft. You're really trying to hone your skills and now you're sort of channeling it into a direction that is very interesting to you. And I, you know, so I think that's something, um, uh, yeah, we should be so lucky, right? <laughs> but okay, I'm sure it's very, I'm sure it's very difficult, and I'm sure there's a lot of challenges yeah. and stuff. But it's but it sounds amazing, and so I'm you know I'm like, uh, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's I think that's a I think that's so great. You know what I mean? So I'm mm -hmm. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the uh, you know to see the product that comes out of it. Um, yeah. But it'll be, a, you know, it'll be like a really, um, it's a real challenging process. I, I bet you they're going to be wonderful, but I know that, <laughs> I know, you know, from my own work, I'm, I'm extra critical. And so it is this, you know, there is this sort of, uh, um, this sort of development that happens because you, you know, you have to get to do the thing and then you'll end up like, uh, learning to appreciate the way it is that you make these images, right? Mm -hmm. I know you've been saying that there's this formula and, I, and, I, and in a way that I, I, there, I do kind of agree to a certain extent that like, when we talk about light, often it can be described through physics, right? Through mathematics. So there is, so you're right. There is kind of a formula there that it describes how, you know, there's an index to the light. Light's coming from somewhere certain like intensity and then there's a form that is falling on and bada bing bada boom that's an image mm -hmm. which comes out of it so there's that but then there's also something else that is uh, um, a, a bit more ineffable i believe that the artist sort of uh you know imparts to the this being of the work that you make so mm -hmm. um, it's part it is partially this uh this formula that this approach that we will take. And then the other part is you, you know, you're the X factor, <laughs> you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's how, it's how you uh, interpret things. Um, each individual thing um, probably comes down to the, maybe just to the marks that you make. Right. And then even, I don't know, maybe even more than that, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, each one that you do, I think will be, uh, um, it's more than a formula, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that. that's real. Yeah, it's more than a formula. That's yeah. true. Good more point. than a formula, but um, mm -hmm. but it helps, I think, to guide you to offer some, you know, some guidance, to offer some, you know, uh, I guess some way to to start to 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 track what it is that it you know the the trajectory that you're going on and what it is that you want to accomplish. So I, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm like all for it. So. Cool, man. Thank oh, you so cool. much. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, well, since I got you guys here today, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, uh, a topic that I, you know, I think is, is really interesting. And it's, it's one of those things that, uh, we probably, intuitively deal with all the time. We've certainly heard about it. Um, but that is uh, symmetry. And so if I could, I'd like to, you know, I've prepared a couple of slides. And so I'd like to, uh, I'd like to share that with you. After my, after my plugin has downloaded. Yes. Hold on. Yeah, that. Okay. Right. Cool. So hopefully you can see my screen. And um, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, symmetry and just different types of symmetry, right? Because I think, again, like, you know, there's a, there's it's kind of, when I say the word symmetry, it's usually sort of shorthand for like a, like a mirror, you know, like some, you know, something is like the same on both sides or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other you know, there are other examples of how symmetry works that um, I think are really useful for tattoo design. And then, if, you know, uh, it, so anyway, we'll just, you know, want to get into it. But, but I, I uh, but I like this, this definition, 
got an AI generated definition over here. So um, uh, again, there may be some subtle inaccuracies because it is from from the AI, but um, it's uh, I think this is very helpful, right? So we'll read it. Uh, symmetry. Uh, symmetry is the exact matching of form and arrangement of parts on opposite sides of a boundary, such as a plane or a line, around a center point or an axis. For example, two objects are symmetrical if they are the same size and shape, but one object has different orientation from the first. And we'll get into what that means in just a minute, right? Um, right, and then there's a definition of, you know, in math, symmetry means uh, that two or more sections of a shape are the same after a rotation, a flip, or a slide. These identical uh, sections are centered around an axis or a mirror line. Um, and some real life examples include like the feathers of a peacock, the wings of a butterfly, dragonflies, hives, honeybees, and snowflakes. So um, yeah, so symmetries. Um, and there are, uh, there are a couple of terms here. I don't think that they're, you know, necessary, it's not necessary that you have to like sort of memorize these things, but just, I think internalizing what the, what the, the way they look, um, I think can help when you're starting to combine interesting topics, when you're, when you're trying to, um, you know, come up with new compositions, let's say. And so, um, the first one we're going to talk about a bilateral, um, translational, rotational, and dilational. Uh, and so, again, you know, some of them might be intuitive as far as like what they do and how they how they function. Um, but let's uh, let's see if we can't chop it up here. So, um, right, bilateral. Uh, again, this is sort of that first definition we were talking about, almost like a mirror, you know, sort of based around an axis line. And so I have a uh, you know I have a couple of you know examples here of like a uh, you know, a, a butterfly. Um, and I think, you know, also we can think about the face, right? The face of a, if you're, if you're looking directly at a face or a body, for example, you know, we're going to, we're likely going to see this, you know, a, a certain bilateral symmetry. Um, interestingly, uh, there's another type, right? And, and I, I know that we, we do see this, um, it's been become much more popular and that's sort of like this uh this sort of balance that happens right you can see that we've got like a butterfly on wing on one side and then all these flowers and stuff on the other side um these two examples would be uh like formal and informal so the uh so this this butterfly here formal butterfly Right, it's a formal bilateral symmetry, right? It's the same on both sides. The other side, informal, right? It's like it's there's a symmetry there. There's a there's a there's a same amount of weight, but but now there's you know there's a there's a difference. They're informally symmetrical. Um, just to sort of give it some language, right? Again, we've probably seen these, and it's possible we've even done some of these as tattoo designs. That's what's going on, right? It's like you, know, you have this, um, you have this, uh, this relationship. There is a balance. Um, I think you know personally. Uh, I like this informal symmetry, especially if you apply it to say like a, a part of the body that's that's you know not the symmetrical part. Oftentimes, people want to put these symmetrical designs like, you know like on their, you know, on a limb, right? Or on the shoulder or something, it is, you know, do they mean like uh, uh, um, a part of their body that's not symmetrical, let's say, right? Whereas like, you know, if you, again, we were talking about a body being, you know, kind of symmetrical along the, the middle, right? So if you were to put this butterfly on their forehead or something like right in the middle, <laughs> right, that would be symmetrical. And I think that this formal one would work more, uh, would be very effective. Whereas the, you know, the other side, you know, it's sort of like because of the balance rather than the, the formal symmetry, I do kind of think that um, uh, it, all of the, the asymmetries of it, they, they start to, you know, become more pronounced, if you, if you will, right? So, um, but to each their own, you know, you may really like that, you know, uh, 
everybody's body isn't it's not perfectly symmetric nope nobody's like nobody's perfect right <laughs> so um there's a there may very well be um you know always exceptions to these these sorts of ideas but um but yeah formal informal bilateral symmetry this is the first example i think it's uh i think it's really interesting um right so uh translational here i have this example of like a honeycomb and so i'm thinking you know that like a pattern right that you might develop right it's the same shape and they're next to each other so again if if there's like a this could be flowers and stuff too right like a, I, I remember back in the day it used to be kind of a popular motif right uh like daisies around an arm right as an armband um or even like a you know the barbed wire armband of course these sorts of ideas where that's a that's a it's a form of symmetry and it's called translational so it's just a simple the translation of one you know of like one shape uh this honeycomb shape <laughs> anyway right so forgive me right but then it's like you know you move it and it's the same shape again right and you get this once things start to come together right then you you know you you mass them together and then you might start to have something that's uh that can start to be really interesting um but again you know we're uh we're just we're talking about symmetry. We're thinking about how these ideas, they all apply to you know, patterns. Um, there's a mathematical relationship too, as we've sort of mentioned is um, here. Um, so uh, again, you're probably familiar with this. It's likely maybe even have done this, this sort of a pattern or something, but perhaps like there are other uh, examples that you're even thinking about right now. So. Um, and then, and again, I think it's sort of interesting too, like you can, we'll, we will get to this, but you know, you, you could see this, you know, in a different perspective as well. And it's still going to maintain this relationship. So, uh, so yeah, this is translation of one shape, right? It's the same shape so translated over and over again. Um, fractals work this way as so fractals have this translational thing happening right so uh next example rotational rotational uh you know sort of when you think about a geometrical shape uh if it moves to a different point it's going to um let's see if we can't uh i don't know if i can nail it ah try it one more time how about that was fun. yeah yeah, so, right. So anyway, if we rotate this shape, right, it's, you know, it definitely starts to, like, we can, now we can see both of these stars, right, for example. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I were to rotate it, you know, like, rotate it enough times, like, it's going to, it's going to keep aligning, right? If So again, so this is, this is like five folded, um, five folded symmetry, right? It's the same on each, you know, it's the same at each point. And so if I rotate it, like it should, it could align right with itself. Um, so from a single point, rotate it, it, it will sort of fall on top of itself again and again. This is the idea of rotational. So it, again, if it's a, it's a shape that can do that. Think about like a square, can do that or circles and stuff but um the more complicated geometrical shapes uh they can start to do it i think that what you can see as well is like these hexagonal shapes right they could also be rotational right uh, also uh that you could also think that this shape this star shape this hexagon shape they also are bilateral right so again these, these sort of all these these symmetries they're happening they don't have to just be one thing it could be a combination of sort of multiple things multiple like types with mandalas exactly exactly like a mandala that's a, you know that's a part of it there's a geometrical relationship 
and um, there's a lot of different symmetries all happening at once. Um, but have you ever seen Islamic designs, like the the like the the, uh, the it's the same thing with just like what y'all were saying with that. It's like they'll take one shape and then they'll just turn it and then you know and but add infinitum and it just looks like this incredible you know uh, design. There's a lot of that in sacred geometry. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. See, you, you, you both are like, you know, we're all on the same wavelength here, I think. And, and again, too, I, I really, you know, I want to like, you know, kind of stimulate you to think about how you see this all the time. And then of course, like, it just sort of occurs to you when you're in the moment and you're designing something like, Oh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use some rotational symmetry. Right. So, Again, here's another example of rotational symmetry. I've got this Fibonacci spiral here, right? Any kind of spiral, mm -hmm. but it's that's another way to think of it, right? It that's a symmetrical object, right? The spiral, it's there's it's it's symmetry, right? From a single point, it's you know that's there's the same thing. It's all kind of uh, you know pointing back to this uh, center point. So, so yeah, so so far, you know, we've gotten. I think we've started to cover lots of different things. Um, and, you know, so rotational, again, it's like a, you, you turn it a little bit, you, you know, you, you turn it enough and it like, it keeps falling on itself, right? It's, this, it's, it's a translation, but again, with, if it's rotated, it's sort of, you know, it keeps becoming the same thing. Um, it can swirl, right? There can be sort of a movement around a central point. That's that's the rotation. It's rotating around a central point. Um, excellent. So, dilational. Uh, dilational. Here's an example of that. Um, it's sort of like, you know, you could think about like dots or something, or just you know, sort of this. Uh, it it it's growing in size. So you know, again, we've it's. Uh, I think that you can you can do this formally with the same shapes, right? You can think about it in circles or squares, stars or hexagons or whatever, right? And as long as they're you know there's sort of this ascending or descending sort of scale or size, this is dilational. It's it's dilating. It's getting you know bigger or something. Um, you can use that to show distance too. Exactly. As the thing is getting smaller, it's getting further into the distance. Right. And as it gets bigger, it gets more shallow and closer to the view. Yes. I, I, I think that's, that's, that's very, you know, well put. That's exactly how, you know, when we think about sort of forced perspective, that's how we're, you know, that's how we're thinking about it. Because it's like still the same object. Yeah. You know I mean? It's like, it's, you know, it's a, in this case, let's say, you know, these are two dimensional, but if we were thinking about it as like a sphere or something, you know, or a cube or whatever, right, it could very well be the same shapes, but like if it's further away, it could be dilationally sort of, you know, it could be, you know, much smaller. Also, you could, you could always use this uh, in relation to this uh, rotational stuff, right? You could, you know, for instance, like uh, you could have a, uh, you know, these dilations where the, you know, it's along this spiral. <laughs> I love doing that in my tattoos. Right. Yeah, exactly. And all yeah. my, you know, my Paisley and, you know, illustrative tattoos. I love the graduating dots. <laughs> graduating. Yeah, that's that. I think that was the word I was looking for. Thank you. And, and, and that's what you're doing. Right, you are you are creating symmetry, even though it, it's uh, it, there's a there's also a, a sort of informality to it. Right, we're talking about this difference, like when we we looked at the butterfly examples, formal side versus this informal side. Right, these these dots they're graduating. They're they're different. Right, in a way they're sort of they have they're kind of asymmetrical, but but there's symmetry there. Right, there's still a mm. symmetry at the heart of it. And so, you know, you can just sort of graduate them. I think, you know, I, I love 
I also love putting them in designs in different places. Um, and then I also really enjoy this, you know, sort of adding these different symmetries together, right? Where you could, again, like have these graduating, you know, dilational forms and then they start to rotate. You could even then start to <laughs> translate them rotate them again, again, like a fractal, then you have a fractal, right? Mm -hmm. so it starts to become very, very complicated. But from this simple thing, this is a very simple thing, um, uh, the complexity starts to emerge uh, out of it. And so, uh, right, so with this in mind, I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to sort of use this as the, the, the premise or the, the, you know, the sort of the introduction um, because I really wanted to, uh, really wanted to show um, the work of another tattooer, and I hope that hope my screen is sharing for you. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, let's make sure that, uh, that that's working. Um, right, so. This is the work of uh, Corey Ferguson. And uh, so if- uh, The mind blowing shit right there. Yeah, if, you're ever, if you've ever, you know, sort of seen this work before, or, you know, uh, I, think, I, I think that the, the sort of, the aesthetic of this, you know, very geometrical style tattooing <clears throat> contempor in, in this contemporary form, because uh, I think they owe a lot to Corey Ferguson. He's been doing this a long time, but it also really harkens back. I think it's there's an aesthetic, you know, an aesthetic relationship to like very ancient forms of tattooing, you know, mm -hmm. like Polynesian mm -hmm. styles and yeah. all of these other, you know, sorts of. It's like where the tattoo needle is like, you know, was like shaped out of a shell or something like that. And it's like, you know, it's like almost like a mag shape, and then they, you know, they tap it into you and it makes a line, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, there's, you know, it's like, there's the, the form follows from, you know, the function of the tools. Uh, and, and so anyway, um, as we were talking about all these different symmetries, um, I think Corey Ferguson really uses them to, to, to a real great effect. Um, so, you know, we can sort of check it out. Awesome. Um, wow. So what are we seeing uh -huh. here, gang? Right? What types of symmetry are uh, pop quiz, right? <laughs> we definitely see rotation. Right. No, I think that, yeah, no, I think so. I think we can, we can see, uh, you know, like the mandala on the shoulder cap, right? It's the same shape. And mm -hmm. if, if we rotate it around the, the center, it would just keep coming up the same. It would land on itself, right? It would just be the same. Um, the other one that I think is really, uh, is, is really interesting. It's that, that translational one. You can see this sort of basket yeah. pattern, you know what I mean? Or even this, it's almost, it looks like, it's like echo almost back here. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. I love that pattern. Yeah. It's, it's very intricate. You know what I mean? And so from a distance, it really starts to turn into this almost, it's, it almost starts to vibrate in a different, you know, like a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. but, um, it looks like um, ripples in a pool. Yeah. But then if that. you focus on it, you see the trend. Yes. Yeah. You can see, yeah. From a, from a distance. And I think this is a, this really relates to what you both were talking about in terms of the mandala or even the Islamic art. Like as you get close to it, you might see a line, you might see even like a shape that you know, sort of looks like a, you know, looks like a two dimensional ge geometry. But as you step back away from it, it becomes something sort of other than the sum of those. Parts. Different. Yeah. It becomes something different. Um, Right, so we're seeing all of these different applications. Uh, we're seeing all these different applications of symmetries that are going on, but then, you know, there's this flowing line that sort of interrupts it all and, you know, breaks it up. And then it becomes, uh, you know, like sort of asymmetrical, 
isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. I think that's so funny. Um, just how that, uh, you know, how it, how that all starts to work out. Um, hey, Jason Leeser, good morning. Good morning, Jason. Okay, I was muted. Good morning, everyone. Hey, um, well, we're just, uh, we're just admiring the work of Corey Ferguson. Um, but we were talking about symmetry and stuff. Um, just all the different, there's, there's so many different. I bet aspects. he was good at geometry in school. Maybe, oh. uh, <laughs> maybe, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I Corey Ferguson's going to be at paradise this year, the paradise tattoo gathering. So we'll have to ask him like, yeah. Did you like geometry class or maybe you did? Maybe you like didn't like the you know it's I think it's always fun you know you sometimes you don't like the subject but there's something about doing it that you love you know that's possible too but I think it'll be interesting to interesting to pick his brain because um, absolutely yeah do you guys have any uh, Corey Ferguson's apps for the so iPad I have uh, I have uh, I have some of the the brushes. I, I got it. I okay. think like in a sampler pack I got from Tattoo Smart. I maybe what it, uh, what is it called again? The I don't have the app. It's he's like, got so program. he's got two different apps for the iPad. Um, one is called Geometrica, and it is wild. I mean, absolutely out there, wild, um, wow. phenomenal app. Like any kind of geometric. Tiling pattern, rotational pattern, mirror pattern, anything you can want to do, you can do it in this app. It's, oh, nice. I don't know how he designed it, but it's amazing. Um, and he's got another one called the tattoo print system, where if you take like a line drawing or anything like that, you can put it in there, tell the app exactly how big you want it to print out, and it'll automatically tile it out on like letter paper. And you can tape that together with like a standard overlap and print out body suits and eight. On, I'm, gonna, I'm writing this one down. This one I want. Sure. So, what do you, what do you say it's called Jason? Could you, could you repeat? It's called okay. the tattoo print system. Okay. Yeah. All those, yeah. All those hours of headache, right? Just solved. <laughs> Gone. Gone. No longer like, okay, well, do I have this section? And then finally, when you get done photocopying, like a huge design, like, of course you're missing like, one tiny little like three <laughs> inch triangle, you know, trying to photocopy something yeah. huge on like a regular copier, right? This eliminates all of that. So it's phenomenal program. Highly recommend it. Um, but I heard it really like a lot of the stuff that he does, like the symmetry stuff that he does here and a lot of his tattoos, he figured out a way to mimic doing that on this geometrica app right and that's why I, I say it's so wild because like it it's nuts it's absolutely amazing so yeah just as a quick just a quick aside to oh this is probably the this is probably the uh -huh. thing yeah oh my god oh, wow bingo so uh, but uh just a quick sort of uh you know like note about you know kind of rep you know relating to what we're talking about I, heard I can have so much fun with that. I know. Uh, I heard right. Philip Moore talking about a story where, you know, he was like, as he was, you know, a young tattooer, um, when people would want, you know, uh, he would design a tattoo for somebody and they'd say, oh, can you make it 10% smaller? He didn't have a photocopier or anything to do. You know what I mean? Like he had to draw a grid mm -hmm. and like sort of make it 10% smaller. You know what I mean? And it's sort of, uh, it's sort of interesting, you know, how like, uh you know today he's philip lou <laughs> but of course oh, like, there was this there was so much labor that sort of went into it um cory ferguson was doing this before he you know before he invented this app so you know it's there is something to the labor that i think is it is it's formative to the to you as a as a practitioner and stuff um but these tools again you know like uh you know, I, I wasn't allowed to have a calculator in math class, you know, even though, you know, we've got calculators <laughs> in our pockets. So um, anyway, I don't I still I don't know if that's still the case necessarily, but 
we 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 do have advancements, right? Yeah. Technology is uh, technology is there to is to be used, but um, but there is something, right? There is something to like that. It's just it's just good for you to you know to work through something. Up oh, there's the there's a hexagon pattern and stuff. Draw freehanding it. Mm. Mm. Easy. If you mess up a little bit, you gotta start all over. Oh no! <laughs> I like the way he gray lines a lot of the bigger shapes, though, to like yeah. lay out what's going on. That way, he's got a rough concept. You know, as far as okay, well, we're going to be filling in this kind of an area, you know, with this kind of a pattern. Um, and we're going to make it fit so that it looks like a window here and we've got this above it and this in the foreground. So I love the way that he layers everything, um, but he still leaves some bigger open areas to do some freehand patterning stuff. So. Mm. I think this relates a bit to kind of what we were, we were, you know, Spirit was talking about his, you know, his, his portraiture practice. He's, you know, he's, you know, he's, you know, developing his portrait work and uh and the sense of light and dark as being like what it is that makes this you know sort of the beauty emerge and you know especially like we talk about tonal work black and gray and the like um but it, but i think we, we were starting to get to this really interesting idea of like you know what is it what's the artist's role in this you know what i mean what is it that the artist mm -hmm. does as well and um uh i think it's it's this this interpretation right and so like you're saying Corey has to somehow manage to make everything visible right there's different tonality in these really complicated designs so that way it's like we could see this foregrounded element right versus a backgrounded one and that would only be available through like you know uh, very carefully uh, calibrating all the tones and stuff so even though it's like completely, you know, this invented thing, um, it's basically two dimensional. It starts to emerge as like a three dimensional thing. Um, that's, you know, it's like, like you said, it's, you know, it controls it through the gray lines or dark black lines or whatever, but um, it's, it, there's a relationship uh, to this, all this symmetry. Oh man. Oh Jesus! Good gracious! Oh, oh, yeah, that's oh, the business. God. That's about to be ridiculous. That's a whole lot of nope for me. Uh, 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 uh. I picture that in my a head. Whole lot of nope. headache. I don't have any tattoos on my head currently. Uh, one day, possibly, but it, that's. I've certainly done, a, you know, more than a few. And that's what I always hear from people is that, like, it just doesn't hurt on top of your head, really, you know? Oh, it wow. Feels like, it feels like, you know, getting your hair pulled out a little bit or, like, you know, or, like, the clippers, you know, get you, <laughs> when they, you know, when you're getting yeah. paid or something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, that's, that's crown yeah, chakra on top of it. It's so cool. Yeah, that is one, cool. more, one more ago, yeah, the mesmerizing videos. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. It looks so good. He, yeah, he and then like, you know, to grow your hair back and you just have a little bit peeking out a few few little points here and there. It'd be you know, I don't know. It's beautiful. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. All right, one more. Let's, let's pick a good one. How about... All right, so on top of blackout, it looks like. Has anybody ever done that? Anybody do the, you know, sort of white ink on black? What do you think I about it? I don't want to. Okay, all right. I, you know, it's I, like... I haven't, but I'm down okay. for the challenge. All right, yeah. all right. I mean, because, you know, it's by the time you go over it, it's it's gray, you know, yeah. and it, it, your your to your black is always going to be darker than the black that's there, you know. Right. Well, you know, I. Um, 
I took Nick Baxter's uh, holistic approach seminar. It, so can't recommend that enough. It, it was a really fantastic seminar. But in it, he talked about how you can think of how you can think of this relationship to white ink into the black. And he was saying, you know, the first application, you know, when it heals out, you're going to have this, you know, it's basically going to be like 35 percent, you know, brighter or something like that. Next time, it's going to be like, you know, five or 10 percent brighter. The third application of white, you know, after it's healed, it's going to be another five, you know, or so percent. Um, so you're never going to get to this, you know, like pureness or whatever. But at the same time, yeah. Like, but but related, you know what I mean? It's light. The the white ink's so much lighter than the black ink, even if it is only, you know, altogether all in forty five percent brighter. It might very well, you know, have quite a, you know, quite an attractive presence to it. Um, so yeah, I, I I I guess you know, it still seems like this somewhat of a new sort of approach. That's just what that's my that's the way I you know the the way that I read it. Um, yeah, I kind of want to wait and see how long it lasts. Yeah. You know what I mean? The longevity of the white over black. Sure. That's very cool, though. I mean, you know, it's like, some, you know, that's, sometimes there's just a lot of black in the tattoo, and it, you know, you give it 20 years, and it's like pretty much, you know, you can't see much. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. dark. Yeah. It's dark, and I think, you know, like if you have an all-color tattoo, it can, you know, same amount of time, it can be pretty light. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the criticism would be like, oh, there's, there isn't the black that's like sort of, you know, uh, all the color is sort of is diminished. But I think the opposite can be true. You can have all this black, and then it's just, you know, just be, you know, instead of it becoming, you know, something that's... Uh, it's same, same, opposite, but same, right? It's symmetrical. Right? There's a symmetrical problem there. <laughs> um, but, uh, all right. That's, oh, uh, hand. Yeah, who does the palm tattoos in here? Oh. Are you a, pal a palmist? I have not done one yet. Jeez, please. I did one. Definitely not a palmer. It's, uh, it, that's healed. Look at that. Yeah. That is healed. Um, Damn. I've, I've definitely heard people talk about it. They're like, you have to, you know, you gotta like, almost like poke it in or something like that. At, um, each individual dot. I don't know. I really don't. I think. Uh, I saw the video of Robbie getting his palm tattooed. Okay. It did not look like it was fun. I've heard that too. <laughs> that <is> really <laughs> freaking painful. I've heard it's pretty rough. So. Um, Jason, you said you've done a palm tattoo. How'd it go for you? Um, wasn't easy. I mean, it, so when you think about it physiologically, right? And this is ingrained in us since we're infants, right? Anytime you, you press in the middle of your hand, you get a little bit of like a, um, almost like a clutching effect, right? So yeah. keeping that hand perfectly flat open and stretched out is an absolute nightmare to maintain accurate stretching because every time you touch down it's the natural inclination of the hand to want to curl Clutch. in right so i mean just getting that stretch alone is an absolute nightmare that and you're dealing with a lot of callous skin right especially for people that are, you know, say day laborers, uh, carpenters, uh, plumbers, anyone that really works with their hands, they're going to have a ton of callous skin, right? So right. that means, okay, what do I need to do to get through that, right? So that's going to pose another challenge. So mm -hmm. it, when I did it, it was very, very difficult. And I actually had to go back over it uh, two additional times just because number one, I wasn't trying to blow anything out. Right. Number two, it was really tricky for me to stretch the skin there, especially on a guy who had like, you know, a bear claw for a hand. Um, and I mean, this dude's hands were huge compared to mine. So 
it was tricky to do that in the beginning but you know getting everything right getting everything dark saturated and then i'm one of those artists where i'm not a big fan of putting my clients in pain i understand it's a byproduct of getting tattooed but if i can i don't like the fact that i have to hurt my clients and when you think about how many nerve endings are in your hand right and now apply pain to all of those nerve endings, right? It's not a pleasant experience. So the fact that I had to go back through multiple times just to make sure the tattoo looked right, it sucked. I hated doing it. Um, I mean, granted, this was maybe eight years ago back when I was still in my tattoo infancy. Um, you know, so... I was just, I was taking on whatever at the time. I was like, yeah, whatever, sit down, I'll do it. Um, mm. But it was really, really difficult to get an accurate design, um, to deal with the hand sweating, right? Because that's going to affect your stencil. Um, there were a lot of factors I didn't really take into consideration when, when I did that when I was a lot younger. Granted, I would probably approach it a bit differently in this day and age, um, but yeah, it was it was not fun and it was not easy. No, thank you for thank you for sharing that. I think that's uh, that makes so much sense. Um, and so here, I was just reading the uh, the description of this one, and uh, it says hand poked, and so that's something that I uh, like um, that just reminds me that yeah that's something that i've always you know that i've known about Corey ferguson for a long time that he does this he also does this hand poked thing um he does like you know uh, a lot of very like intricate designs um just ha by hand and so but i haven't uh, done stick and poke since i was in high school right yeah, right <laughs> but it's a real uh it's it's becoming a practice that is like um it's there's a demand for it you know it's it's been it's certainly been elevated um insofar as like uh just you know again there may be sort of more ancient cultural hand poking practices that are mm. like, you know, certainly you know uh uh you know it's very important um but like like you were saying amber you know for the most part uh you know you know I think in, in many of our minds, we, we sort of associate this stick and poke with, you know, like there's a juvenile approach to it, or, you know, like, you, you know, you can't get access to the machine jet or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but here it is, we're seeing it's very like, uh, you know, it, it can be this very elevated and, and uh, sophisticated um, tattoo aesthetic. Yeah. I don't know which ones, you know, he, hand poked or not, but I, but I definitely remember years ago, uh, that there were just so many, um, so many examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. I like this spiral thing too. Again, this rotational cool. symmetry, right. Yep. And then it, you know, the dots, um, as they gradate, I mean, just a concentration there. I mean, I think we might be able to, we might be able to call that, um, you know, the dilational possibly, but, mm -hmm. but anyway, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, I'm trying to, uh, associate what, you know, the subject, what we're talking about and, uh, um, yeah. And the work of, you know, the work of, of other tattooers that, you know, are, are doing really innovative things, really amazing work. Um, so yeah, so, uh, thanks to Corey Ferguson. Um, great work and uh we really appreciate that and looking forward to seeing Corey ferguson at the the paradise uh, tattoo gathering so um so yeah come to paradise if you want to meet you know you want to meet and uh, uh cory ferguson so well um that's our show uh i just wanted to you know thank everybody for coming uh, spirit had to had to duck out so um we'll catch you next time spirit thank you for coming um if we could let's just do quick sign offs and then we'll uh we'll we'll get on to it right back to work everybody so um 
Amber, uh, let's have your sign off. Uh, tell us who you are and where we can find you. I'm Amber Morgan, and you can find me on all social media sites under Amber Morgan. And as always, thank you so much for hosting this every Monday. It really does start my week off okay, because otherwise I'd still be in bed and not producing any art. I get up in the morning on Monday, I take the class, I get to talk to everybody, and then I get right to work. That's... Um... Really appreciate you know your sentiment and uh, you know I'm I'm really you know it's uh, it's always tough right like you were you know the story that you shared earlier um, it, it can always be tough sort of making a transition you know having to you know having to do something different but uh, like you said you had a really great outlook on it and I also you know just believe in you I think you know what I mean I think you know your work thank you I appreciate that. I, I do. I mean, you know, you, you, you have, you show a lot of dedication and then also like I seen your work improve just, I personally have. So I, um, I think that you have a lot to offer and, uh, you know, we're certainly, we're certainly honored to have you Amber. So anyway, I I'm so glad you could thank come. Thank you. Today. I'm honored to be here. Yeah. It's thank you again. So, um, and Jason, if you could give us a sign off, we'd love to, Love to know where we can uh, find out more about you. Um, so my name is Jason Leeser. I work at the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, Pennsylvania. Uh, feel free to hit me up. Uh, just got done designing a new logo for the studio. So uh, cool. Just thought I'd rep that today. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, you can find me every Sunday at 1 p.m. for the Skill Building Sunday Drawing Group here live on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. I will also be at the Paradise Gathering. I will be doing an advanced Procreate seminar, um, going through talking about tips and tricks and designing your own brush sets. And um, I may even have a free brush set giveaway for people that sign up for my class. Um, it's been an ongoing project for about a year and a half. Uh, I've been working on a um, like an organic texture brush set um, that you know, I think closely resembles a lot of uh, the the different textures that are used in a lot of bioorganic designing. Um, so I, if all goes well, that'll be set up and ready to go. Uh, if not, I'll probably just get a list of emails and I'll email it out to everyone. But yeah, um, I'll be at the Paradise Gathering. Feel free to stop by. I'm actually working on some, uh, some bodysuit templates uh, getting those together and ready to go for the Paradise Gathering for collaborative art. Um, I'm trying to do different views of the human body uh, for different types of collaborative artwork. Um, so far, I've got side profiles, back profiles, front profiles, and I think I might do some like oblique profiles as well, or like some sleeve layouts or, you know, stuff like that um fun stuff where people can collaborate and you know if given a template what can go where you know what kind of constraints can we work with um so it should be a, a great time up at the paradise gathering this year very excited for it. outstanding yeah I've, i got a chance to uh to jump on your stream yesterday and uh, check out the you know the body seat you were drawing it was it was excellent so um yeah i can't encourage everybody enough to Check out Jason's work uh, and come to Paradise. I'm also gonna go to Paradise, and so I will see you there. And um, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again for coming, Jason. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to uh, to being on your show again next Sunday. So you know, so please join Jason and I next Sunday on uh, Skill Building Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern on right here on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. Um, so again, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, if you're still with us, please hit the like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm, of course, as you know. And then you can leave your uh, constructive uh, comments in the chat. Uh, we really uh, we really appreciate your feedback too. Um, Want to thank Guy Atchison again for making this possible. Uh, you know, really appreciate uh, everything you do, Guy. So thanks, and um, be sure to check out GuyAtchison.com. Uh, Hyperspace Studios, and then also uh, reinventingthetattoo.com. I'm James Wisdom. 
You can find me at Tattooing Wisdom on social media and then, of course, TattooingWisdom.com. Um, this has been Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, I'll see you all again, same time, same channel, next week. Uh, have